So going on from that, when you did like the media and all, all the kind of hype after that, what, what was that kind of dealing with that? I mean, with all the kind of questions and yeah. the pressure after. Oh, I suppose oh, I was enjoyed it. I suppose yeah. it was something. Um, well, just seen how happy the players were. Yep. More importantly, myself, it was an achievement that I'd loved being in. But uh, yeah, I, I did. I didn't mind it. And then uh, I missed game two through injury. Oh, okay. And yep. played, and we got beat. So then it come down to a decider at um, Sydney. Oh, okay. Brad Fittler come out of retirement and played five eight. So yeah, it was good because in that the decider there was eight dragons, and I think there was myself, Mark oh, Gasnier, really? Matty Cooper, Jason Royals, Luke Bailey, Far out. Brent Kite. So we, we had a heap of dragons yep. in there, and uh, yeah, we won it. So wrapped up the series, and oh, that was okay. my last last Origin series. So it was a pretty good way to finish. That, not a bad one at all. Um, and so you would have been. So that's two thousand and four. So you would have been twenty nine. 28, tw- yeah, yeah, I think. Something and like so that. so going on from, from that kind of moment, did you play Origin the next year? Or no, no, I retired Australia, from rep. Oh, I you played, retired, yep. the end of that year, I went on a kangaroo tour. Oh, so, okay, so you played the Australian yeah. team later in the yeah. year and then retired. And then retired. Okay. I was struggling. Uh, yep. With my knees, I was struggling. I wasn't. I knew I wasn't playing. As I think I got Dalian Lock of the Year in 2004. I was playing Lock at the time, so I'd been <laughs> around, but... Well. I, uh, yeah, yeah, I was struggling just with my knees. I couldn't train. I probably wasn't playing as good as what I could. So yep. I'd give the rep away thinking I want to Focus. concentrate on hopefully yep. winning the comp at the Dragons, which we had a good side, 2005, 2006. We had the team that could have won it, yep. didn't want it. Everyone said we choked, but we probably did. We yeah, couldn't get yeah. to the big the big decider. So I put all my energy into that. And, um, yeah, I probably wasn't playing my best footy my last two years when I, when I was, uh, yep. was with them, the injuries. Um, and speaking of the knee injuries, was uh, what was obviously the time when they said you'd never play again was probably the closest you, you came to kind of calling it quits. Was there ever a time when you considered it, like really, really considered it, or was there like, no, nah, this is just not a not an option for me? You know? Yeah, it wasn't an option. Yeah, but okay. I, in re- uh, reality, I thought it may happen, but yep. I was going to do anything. I was looking to go overseas because it was a sort of rare knee injury what okay. they had. It wasn't just your basic so knee what, reconstruction. So what specifically happened with it? It was more bone bruising. It wasn't an injury, just went bang, an impact. I'd done it. I had this feeling in my knee for ages, and yep. they never knew what it really oh, was. So you were playing on it kind yeah, of Yeah, I played on oh, it for wow. ages. It got worse and worse. And then in Origin, I had a knee clash, and I went off, and they the, the staff there told me I'd done my cruciate, which is like, a, yep. I suppose, a lot of people do that. Yep. But I went and had scans, and that was my bone. All the bone was that badly bruised that all the bone had just flaked away. They said it was just like a pothole in the road. So, so you were playing with... Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's what I mean. I, I was struggling a bit. I wasn't pl- I didn't get to play. I was sort of at my peak, but I struggled with... Yep. I, I had that knee injury. you wouldn't have been able to train, you know? No. Yep. I was the Terry Lamb. I was living in the pool, rower, boxing. Wow. So, and you know, you'd know what it's like. There's nothing more better than just training on the field like running oh, doing your proper proper footy feeling, training like you can do as much as cardio boys. as you want yep. but you're never you're never footy fit no, so no I struggled playing yep. like that but yeah but uh, with that knee yeah it was just uh, yeah, it was so rare really yep. so there was they weren't sure what it was uh, so so it wasn't even an impact thing like was it a like a I don't know a Bi- biological thing or yeah was it, well they don't know oh, I asked okay. the same thing what's caused it yeah, they yeah. couldn't really they couldn't really tell whether it was my running style my knees hyperextended a little bit at the back yeah. so they said there was a lot of pressure Far out, on the, it was on the worst part of your knee you could get it it's called the, oh, on the weight bearing area so yep. it was copping all the impact oh, really. so okay. the bone yep. was just sort of like that grinding away and it just oh. all the bone chipped away Far out. so then I had a year off yep. with that Sat out the year and a half, come back there, yep. 2002, where I got player of the year. Towards the back end of that year, I started getting the same pain in my other knee. Oh, really? That would have been... You were, but it wasn't the same thing, though, was it? Same thing. I had to go have <laughs> another the operation on the other knee. So yep. it must have been a... Yeah, whether it was my legs or the yep. way I ran or what, but that, yeah. So, I mean, how does that feel like today? Like, do you still struggle with it today? Like, yeah, I struggle a bit. <laughs> I walk around with a bit of a... Well, yeah, I don't yeah. think, but someone goes, are you, are you, limping? Are you limping? I go, yeah, no, nah, yeah. I just must be the way I walk. But yeah, yeah. I can do... I still love training. I go to the gym. I can yep, do weights. Yep. I can't run at yeah, all. Really? So, yeah, I don't run. I struggle sort of standing up all the how, time. How how long in you cre- into towards like the end of your career? How how many years were you like not fully training? You reckon? Uh, probably the last two thousand six, five, four. The last three three to four years, I was 
um, not fully trained, but oh, my last yeah. year, 2006, I struggled. I think yeah. I had an operation. I only played about 12 games, and then I knew I was retiring towards the end of the year. I was getting my knee local yep. just to train just for the last session oh, to really? prove that I could play. I was just getting pinpricks all in my knee. And they said that can be real dangerous because if I do do a cruciate, they go, you mightn't feel it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was about to say uh, that. But I was, yeah. Mate, yeah, I was struggling. 2006, I wasn't training at all. I'd train yep. for maybe 20 minutes, do ball work the last session. Yep. But I was getting my knee local just to, uh, to get on the field. And, and that decision to retire, like, walk us through, you know, the kind of steps you took. Like, how hard was it? Obviously, it was hard, but as in, like, was it a just, like, this is the only option I have? Or was it maybe I should retire? Form isn't that good? Yeah. What was it kind of like for you? Bit of everything like that, yeah. I knew, I, I think I knew I had to. I was struggling. I was getting my knee drained after games, fluid <laughs> drained out of it. And I was, I'd had enough of that. And I knew I wasn't playing well. I yep. couldn't train. I just, I knew it was time, but I didn't want to retire, yep. but... Yep. As a, there comes a time, and I, yeah, I, I sort of went and seen a lot of medic, medicals just to get make sure that there was nothing else uh, I could do. And they sure said, you got, yep. yeah, they said, you're gone. They said, you're running on a time bomb. <laughs> they said, you got the knees of a nine year old. So that was sort of not good, but I just knew that I'd given, got yep. as much as I could out yeah, of my yeah, knee yeah. and, and no be retired. Chance. So yeah, retired 2006, we played Melbourne again in a grand final qualifier and, yep. and got beat. So. And has there been any progress that you know of that uh, in knee? Obviously, there has been progress in knee surgery, but ha- has have you kind of re- revisited maybe redoing your knees to to make it so that you can run now or anything like that? But I haven't fully researched it, but I wouldn't mind. That's all I'd love to do is just be able to play a bit of fun, touch yep. football, and, and things like that. Yep. I've got a couple of girl, a couple of kids yep. now, so to be able to run around with them would be would be nice. But we take I it for granted, eh? Yeah, just running around. I haven't fully looked into it because I'm sick of operations. I'll. Yep. Uh, <laughs> But one day I might. I know I'll need new knees. But if there's something, maybe if comes there's along. some comes along that, uh, yeah, I wouldn't mind being a, a guinea pig. If there's any surgeons out there who want to practice <laughs> any, practice anything on me, I'm willing to give it a crack. Um, so just I ask some of the um, the guys from like old school. I, I enjoy here. What would, would be what would be the craziest thing you've seen a guy do to get on the field? I asked Joshy Miller. He was a bit later than you, but he said that uh, Alan Tung had a twisted septum or something, and, and he got it needled two needles up the head out of it oh. just to come on the field. What do you reckon the, the, the toughest thing you've seen, especially an old school footy player, the toughest thing you've seen to get on a footy field? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, you, yeah, you used to see some, like blokes used to, that was the, that's what the sort of badge of honour was, trying yep. to play with injury. And I, I really, I sort of liked to battle myself too, trying yeah, to play yep. with injury, knowing that you probably shouldn't play or you, can't, you don't want to let your mates well, down. When, you got a bone, <laughs> when your bone's degenerated, <laughs> you probably should be. I had a, or well, for mine, I had a, uh, I broke my cheekbone. You had a plate, didn't you? I had a plate put in under there. They went in the side of my head. I had the operation, and then uh, a week later, I went up to see the surgeon, and I asked him about playing, and he said no, and I come back a to week, tra- A week later, you asked? I come back to training and told him he'd signed off, and I'm sweet. So I played t- about 10 days after getting a plate in my head, and first tackle, I, first tackle, I got split. I was straight above it. I thought, um, I went like that. I thought the plate was going to fall out. <laughs> but it was stitches above my eye, but... That's that just that what you've done back in the day. Today. That yeah. could never well, happen today. Yeah, not now. Yeah, well, I lied to the club. I told yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I told them the surgeon said you're right to. And right did, to did you play the next week as well? Or yeah. They say? No, I played. I just had stitches and, uh, yeah, I uh, silly at the time, but that's just things. I used to love playing with injuries and <laughs> hated letting the mates down. So <laughs> hated well, letting the mates. The, you got a plate in your the head. Doctor, <laughs> the doctor and the club weren't real happy, but <laughs> oh my god, that's insane. Um, so now that you've kind of. You, you, you do corporate work with the with the dragons and stuff like that. Are, are you enjoying still being a part of the dragons, kind of their resurgence now this year, being just there or thereabouts? Is it something that you enjoy? Yeah, I love it. As I said, when I first finished, I wanted to be away from it. Yep. I don't know. I think a lot of players seem to go through it. You feel as though you don't want to be hanging around or you don't want to. Like I wanted to get away from football. Yeah. I just felt like I was sort it was of like a bad break cling- up to me. Like so I just <laughs> felt like I was sort of clinging on yep. and players used to say, "Why don't you come train and this?" But yeah, I yeah, just I felt exactly what you mean. F- I'd been at the club since I was fifteen. I felt I needed a break, so I did that. And um, yeah, and then after sort of a while away from it, I missed it. I missed having yep. that team environment. Just Even though mates. now I haven't got that sort of team, but. I'm good mates with Mary McGregor. He's back yep. coaching. Uh, Peter Doust has been good, and I've got employment with the club. So, yeah, I love being back around. I'm not, yep. yeah, as I said, with the first grade side, but yep. I'm around the club. I'm around Still footy. Part of it. I go train and train with a few of the boys, like the staff, Mary and Youngie, before training. So, yep. yeah, I love being, uh, being, being back around. it. It's a club that I've been with since I was sort of 14, 15. Yep. So it uh, means a fair bit to me. 
And uh, because you're such you, you're such a, a legend of the game, what would be it, with New, Ze- New South Wales kind of um, I guess you'd say poor form over the last ten years or so? What would be something that you would change in the New South Wales side to kind of I don't know, just then something needs to change, obviously. Yeah. What, what, what would you do if you if you were still playing? What would you kind of be wanting to do? I don't know. I think we need a couple of maybe a five eight. I reckon we've struggled. Oh, obviously, New South uh, Queensland have had. Uh, Thurston and Lockie for them yep. for so long. Then, then Cronk. Lockie retired. Now Cronk's gone in, but you got their Evans squad, like they obviously New South Wales are playing against an outstanding side. Yep. You got Inglis and yep. Slater. You never get so that group of people. We again. haven't got that. Like, and we get bagged for probably changing our side all the time, but we don't have the likes of what yeah, Queensland yeah. got. So I don't know. They've got a good tough side there. I really think we need a bit. Like New South Wales have always had a big five eight. I think that helps. Yep. I've had Fitler, Barrett. I played That's five eight point, myself. Yeah. I, I didn't think of that. So they've always had Braith and us. They've always had big five eights, and we've struggled a little bit in that five eight area. Yep. For probably a front rower, but I thought last year, obviously winning it was really good. But yep. I think you could see this year how far we're still a bit behind them. They give us a bit of a bit of a touch up. So yeah, I don't know. There's like, and even if you put Bird there, Bird doesn't play there in club, so it doesn't nah, give him a chance to yeah, really. Yeah, Bird's like, probably not. Or he could. He has played there, yeah. but yeah, like a, I don't know, just Josh. Uh, Maloney's done okay, but I just don't think he's. I don't know if he's re- a big game player. No, to be honest. I just I think that he's a fantastic. Don't get me wrong, he's a, he's a great great player. But when you're going against like Thurston and Lockyer and or not Lockyer anymore, but Thurston, Cronk and Cherry Evans, I feel like New South Wales just need they need those big game players. That yeah, just kind of can do can step to that kind of. Yeah, that's level. it. So there's been a position there. You got someone like Blake Austin now who's sort of starting to play yep, well. Whether, whether they bite the bullet and give someone like that a go, like I rate Mitchell Pearce as a great player. Yep. Obviously at Origin he just hasn't won yet, or he's had a fair few yep. shots at it. But club wise, and I, I love the way he plays. I yep. think he's an Origin player, but he cops a fair bit of cri- criticism. That's what, I think that's a big. I think that if they could just like get him away from the media and just completely media ban him yeah. and get him some confidence I think yeah. that would change everything if we could make someone like Sam Burgess or Sonny Bill Williams a New South Walesman <laughs> I think someone like that in our side would oh, yeah. uh, would be Sam Burgess would, I'd love to see him play Origin he'd be he'd be fantastic in Origin yeah someone fantastic. like him would be outstanding but yeah. oh, we got we got the players there but as I said it's just been that era for Queensland yeah. with them great players and New South Wales haven't had sort of standout ones like that so that's yeah. why we're sort of struggled a little bit and I guess it's a snowball effect too like uh, Queensland have this 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 kind of culture and uh, this core of a team so bringing people in and and nurturing them to become what they need to be is a much easier than yeah. New South Wales because yeah. you, you're kind of looking for answers each each series there's a new kind of person here or there yeah for sure Queensland have done it great and I think uh, New South Wales have sort of followed their lead a little bit in having all these rookie camps and bring New South Wales in and teach them about origin I think yep. which Queensland do really good with their rookies like I think they educate them up on what Origin means what all the ex-players have done in the past yep. for them so New South Wales are doing that Laurie Daly uh, I know him personally he's a great fella he's done a great job with New South Wales and he's the right man for the job but yeah we're just uh, still trying to find we've got some great New South Wales players like Definitely. don't get me wrong yep. but uh, we're just still that bit far behind so next year's going to be another big series as we went uh, eight, eight straight losses wasn't it and then yeah, uh, it and one win one, so and and a loss this year again. So, yeah, it's going to be a big ask again next yep. year. So, um, there's no... The thing with New South Wales is you couldn't pick the side now, whereas Queensland, you, you could nearly just pick, pick the side that's, again for that's next very year. Good point. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> They're um, like a club team. Yeah, well, that's... A, and it's become like that. Yeah, and, they and just... Just like a good club yeah. team, you get rookies coming through. Like Brisbane Broncos, when they had that era of dominance, yep. their rookies were always so good because they kind of brought them into that culture. Yeah. Like Melbourne Storm. They, yeah. That, you know, they brought them into yeah, that culture. Yeah, sure. Um, another question I like to: What's the the best memory you've got from footy? As in, just crazy, whatever it is that that <laughs> you kind of remember. What would be the best memory that you've had? The old um, school footy kind of that you would say to your kids when you're a you know 80 year old. This would happen when I was playing footy, kind of thing. Yeah, a lot of them we even speaking to players these days and a bit younger, but the Mad Mondays and some of the drinks we used to have was yep. like crazy if you done them now you'd be set you'd nrl you'd be Ghosties. gone the dragons yep. you'd be you'd be asked the nrl you'd be gone but some of the things i suppose you used to get away with there was no social media yep yeah so you could do it now yep. couldn't not anything no cameras and shit no yeah. we used to mate we used to have fun we used to oh there was nudity and everything <laughs> but there, as i said there was no uh there was no um no cameras and that around so the craziest thing a lot of them probably couldn't be said but 
went on some great trips, yep. Cancun and Bali and mate, yeah, I, I can't remember one off the top of my head that was uh, that was pretty funny. I can't remember one. <laughs> um, one thing you change about the game today that you, that's frustrates you. Obviously, it's you. You were there through the generational change. You know, yep. footy changed a lot yeah. with the wrestle. What, what would you change with it? Um, yeah, the wrestle probably. Uh, the wrestle got a bit boring there for a while, and they, yep. they are trying to change it. But I think that's probably the biggest one. Or oh, I, I really like. I like the shoulder charge and the yep. fight rule. I'd like to see that. I oh. don't know whether they'll ever bring it back, but the shoulder charge was so exciting. But it could go wrong. Yep. But I just think if they brought that back or brought it in, if it goes wrong, the guy suspend him. Yeah. But yep. if, if they can be good, they can be entertaining. The fans 100%. loved it. Like Sonny Bill Will, Williams used to do yep. it outstanding. He brought people to the game yeah. just because of that. So that rule sort of annoys me a bit. And seeing this pushing and shoving, and especially oh. Origin, like everyone used to, there was always stinks in yep. Origin. That's what everyone used to love about Definitely. it. Definitely. And so I, I, being a bigger man, I don't know if you would agree with this theory, but I, I, I believe that I feel like the small men have small niggly men actually have an advan- tactical advantage now because they can niggle big guys yeah. and get completely away with it. The big guy can't do anything about it. Whereas back in the day, if you were a little hooker and you yeah. niggled you, you'd get dropped and you wouldn't do it. For sure. Well, I've seen it the other night. Uh, Josh Reynolds done it. Yeah. I like him as a player. He's a yeah. little goer, but he's <laughs> yeah. a little pest. But yeah. there was a bit of a, I think uh, it was when Gareth, Gaz Widdop got hit. He's yeah. kneed in the back and all the big forwards come in and then Joshy Reynolds come in yapping. Uh, yeah. well, they just know that they're yeah. not going to get, nothing's going to happen to them. Yeah. Yeah. Look, so yeah, it's a, that, that's probably one of the biggest ones I'd 